What's up guys and welcome back to another Creature Features episode here on Shark Bites. Today Rainbow Boars 95 wants a creature feature on the whale shark and I am happy to oblige. The whale shark is my joint favourite shark species alongside the tiger shark and I've been wanting to do a creature feature on these big spotty fish for absolutely ages. It just so happens that I also did my undergraduate dissertation on whale sharks all the way back in 2017 so strap yourselves in because this one is going to be a goodie. But just before we start today are you subscribed to Shark Bites yet? If not why not subscribe? now. Based on this fun little graph here, I can see that about just under half of you watching these videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel yet. So why not take two seconds to click that big red subscribe button below the video. You'd actually be surprised how much of a difference it makes to the channel. It's massively appreciated by me and you'll never miss out on another Shark Bites video ever again. Everyone's a winner. But yeah, please do subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. All of you watching at home bring this channel to life. So thank you. Anyway, enough admin. Let's learn some awesome facts about whale sharks. So the whale shark is a large filter feeding shark species that inhabits tropical and warm temperate oceans around the world. And when I say large, I mean large, as these guys are the biggest fish in the sea. They're normally between five and 10 meters long, but according to ZSL, the largest whale shark ever recorded was a whopping 20 meters. That's 66 feet. And that's about the length of two and a half London buses. But the question is, how did they get so big, especially considering whale sharks feed on predominantly plankton and krill? Well, we often see whale Whale sharks feeding at the surface of the water, but they also spend a lot of time feeding at depth as well. And it turns out the whale sharks are actually negatively buoyant, so it means they can glide down pretty easily to the sea floor. And because they're negatively buoyant, they don't have to expend energy to keep themselves down there at the bottom. It's thought that because of this, whale sharks can actually conserve up to 30% of their energy, allowing them to stay warmer for longer, meaning there's more time to feed. For whale sharks, the larger they are, the more heat they can store, which means they can forage for longer, even at depths where the temperatures are really cold. And this is probably how and why whale sharks can reach those impressive lengths as well as impressive weights of up to 30 tons. Although feeding on small fish, krill and plankton is pretty laborious work for whale sharks. They can't bite or chew so they have to filter their food out from the surrounding water and it's thought they do this for nearly eight hours a day. During these hours they're filtering thousands of litres of seawater per hour and they have to do this to make sure they have enough energy to power their bodies for swimming. And speaking of swimming, damn do these sharks swim. A few years ago a whale shark named Anne completed the longest trans-Pacific migration for the species, travelling from Panama to the Mariana Trench, a distance of 12,000 miles. And this was the longest recorded distance a whale shark has ever traveled that we know of anyway. Now onto one of my absolute favorite whale shark facts. And I swear this is one of my go-tos when anyone asks me for a shark fact. As you probably know, whale sharks have a combination of spots and stripes and they're thought to potentially act as camouflage. The spots and stripes may disperse and reflect light, making their outlines harder to see for predators. Whale sharks probably don't have too many predators though. Anyway, onto my favorite fact. The whale shark spot patterns are unique to each individual, almost like a thumbprint in humans, which means through the use of photo identification, we can actually tell the difference between individual whale sharks based on those spot patterns. By taking a photo of their left and right hand sides in between the fifth gill slit and the pectoral fin, we can actually put this into software to help us map those spots. And the software that we shark scientists used to do this was actually originally developed by NASA for mapping the stars in our sky, but was repurposed by shark scientists for mapping the spot patterns on whale sharks. How cool is that? Also, pause the video for a second and let me know in the comments if you're gonna use that fact to impress your friends in the future. Anyway, it's this spot pattern photo identification stuff that's helped us learn so much more about whale shark movements around the world. For example, we now know where certain whale shark populations go at different times of the year, whether those populations are resident or transient. It's massively pushed on whale shark research over the years. Now, because this fish is the biggest fish in the sea, you'd presume that we know everything there is to know about them, right? Well, in reality, large swathes of their life histories are still a complete mystery to shark scientists. We know that they're ovoviviparous. Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to say that. <laughs> we know that they're ovoviviparous. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say it. Ovoviviparous. Yeah. I think I've got it right. It basically means that whale shark embryos develop in eggs inside the mother and then hatch from those eggs while still being inside the mother. But we only know this from one individual shark nicknamed Big Mama who was caught in nets in Taiwan back in 1995. Here she contained around 300 embryos all at varying stages of development. The smallest still being in their eggs and the largest being around 64 centimeters long. So we don't really know how many offspring they produce or how often. It's all based off one individual shark, which I find absolutely crazy 
crazy. We still don't know where these female sharks give birth or at what depth they do this as it's never been seen. Although populations of absolutely massive pregnant female whale sharks have occasionally been seen off the Galapagos Islands over the years. It's been speculated that they might be giving birth at pretty deep depths, which might explain why no one has ever seen it happening before, but we just don't know. And then after they give birth, we don't really know what happens to the pups. Baby whale sharks or neonates are incredibly rare to see and there haven't been many documentations of them at all with probably just under 30 confirmed sightings. These miniature whale sharks, which are usually between 40 and 100 centimeters, seem to just vanish during their formative years until they start getting a little bit bigger, say around two to three meters, and we start seeing them again in the shallows. It's thought that only about 10% of whale shark pups actually make it to adulthood, so it's not very great odds for you if you're a baby whale shark. We also don't really know how old they get, but it hasn't stopped scientists from estimating. One of the ways scientists have used to try and age whale sharks is through nuclear bomb dating. Back during the Cold War, countries like the Soviet Union, the US and the UK were testing out their nuclear weapons in the open air. This temporarily doubled the levels of a radioactive isotope known as carbon-14 in the environment. And you can actually pick this up within animals. Looking at the growth rings within whale shark vertebrae, scientists were able to identify carbon-14 within those growth rings and dated a 10 meter female to around 50 years old. Although others have estimated that whale sharks can potentially reach ages of over 100. I just find it mad how there are still so many things we don't know about these animals. The science is constantly revealing new information about them though, which is pretty exciting. Sadly, whale shark populations are now in global decline, even though they have international protections across the world. And it's thought that a combination of targeted fisheries and bycatch is contributing massively to this decline. The good thing is, the more we learn about these animals from a science perspective means that we can actually start targeting mitigation strategies in local areas to help protect them. So there we go, guys. I better stop talking now because I could literally sit here and talk for hours and hours about this. It's already going to take me hours and hours to edit this info dump. <laughs> I know there's a bunch of things I haven't mentioned about whale sharks today. So if you have any awesome whale shark facts that you want to share, make sure you comment them below. Also, I'd love to know whether any of you have actually seen a whale shark before or whether you'd like to go swimming with them. So let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all our latest creature features and other videos. Until then, see you next time.